Hey everyone, we're going to talk about what's going on at home during the Cold War, that ideological war about capitalism versus communism, the United States versus the Soviet Union, that competition for better arms, weapons, uh, space exploration, technology, and who's going to be the ultimate country, who's going to be the success most successful country. Uh, but we're shifting gears from that and looking on, looking at what's going on at home during the beginning of that war in a, in a decade known as the 1950s. And this is a decade where people become very prosperous and successful and wealthy in the United States. Um, not everyone, but a, a large uh, percentage of people for sure, more than any other really a real uh, generation that we've had. So uh, it all starts out with our veterans, our soldiers, our GIs who have come home from the war. And these veterans need some things. They need a job. They had left the war, I mean, excuse me, they have left their country to go to war, and they likely left their job behind if they had one. And now they're coming home. They need to be taken care of. They need a place to work. Uh, they also need a home. A lot of these people had uh, gone into the military right out of high school or in their early 20s and most of them haven't had a real chance to start a life own a home yet so uh, they need some help getting one of those they also need an education like i just said a lot of them right out of high school early 20s may have started college if they're in it at all so they need some help going to school or continuing uh, uh, to go to school get a higher education so the u.s the united states is going to pass what we know today as the gi bill or the GI Bill of Rights. And this is going to help them get those things that they need. For instance, the GI Bill is going to help pay for a soldier's education, help them go to college, a higher education, so they can uh, get more skills and get a better job, make more money. Uh, it's going to also help loan them money for homes, get, get them a low interest loan so they could go out and buy a home that they want. And it's going to help them get a job or create their own business, buy a farm, something like that where they are in charge of their own um, livelihood for the most part. So this is really different than World War I where World War I American soldiers came home and they needed help. They didn't have jobs to go back to. They A lot of them had mental problems from the war they weren't being taken care of and that pushed the united states into a recession a period of economic downturn so world war ii is going to be a lot different because what the gi bill does is kind of jump start the economy and really get things going in the 1950s for a lot of prosperity so let's look at a pl quick political cartoon which kind of summarizes everything we just looked at here is our veteran our soldier from world war ii of course and he's coming home and now he's going to get some help with the gi bill so he can go to school get a higher education go to college he can go over and get a job or start a business uh, buy a farm or i'm going to insert a little house here since it's not in the picture he can go get a low interest home loan he can go buy a house so he is being taken care of by the government that's going to help us be more prosperous in the 1950s uh, now with this prosperity that more Americans are going to be having, specifically a lot of these soldiers that came back from the war, a lot of Americans will start to move out of the cities and into what we call the suburbs. So the suburbs are just residential areas, areas where there's lots of neighborhoods, homes, not very industrial, and they're the residential areas on the outskirts, on the outside of the city, on the fringes of them, in other words. So let's look at a place, uh, a city that is my hometown Houston Texas and you know if this is kind of the main city of Houston right here and we can see that uh, on the outside of the cities we start to see more suburbs places like Stafford Sugarland Missouri City Richmond Rosenberg are all suburbs of Houston they're on the outskirt they're on the fringes of the city uh, Katy Jersey Village Tomball the Woodlands Kingwood Pearland Clear Lake these areas are all around Houston and places for people to go escape the busy life in the city and the more dirty, crowded life in the city and go settle down and be more prosperous and away from what's going on in the city and stay in these more suburban areas or the suburbs as they're known. So we had previously talked about in the late 1800s, there was this push in rural areas. People start, uh, started moving to the urban areas, which we call urbanization or urban migration. 
because of the new, the new factory jobs, the new industrialization that was going on. And now there's even a different change. We have a different type of migration or movement. In the 1950s, people stop, start leaving those urban areas, not all of them, of course, and they start going to the more suburban areas. So we have more suburban migration going on. And that brings us to Levittown. Now, Levittown is what we call, well, first of all, it's one of our first real modern suburbs. And it's what a lot of people called having cookie cutter houses. This uh, community had what they called cookie cutter houses, in it, uh, houses, excuse me. And if, you know, a cookie cutter makes things exactly the same for the most part. You got your dough out, you put the cookie cutter in, and it, you have perfectly shaped cookies that are all exactly the same. Well, that's going to happen with Levittown. So homes are going to be made out of pre-made parts that are built in other places and they're, they're sent in to this neighborhood and they create a few variations of homes identical. So the whole neighborhood would probably have four of the same home all over the place. And they could do that because they had these pre-made parts and they were made identically, which means you can make houses very very quickly you don't have to have all these different plans for the different types of houses you want you're just making either house one two three or four and because of that houses are made quickly and anytime we make something quickly prices go down that means more people can afford to move to places like levittown to the suburbs which means there's more suburban migration more people leave the city and go to the suburbs And another uh, reason that this is happening is I told you already that there's lots of prosperity in the 1950s. And that's uh, while this is all going on because soldiers have more skills uh, because of uh, the GI Bill. Uh, there's just more prosperity in general. The economy is doing great. Uh, average families wages are increasing by fifty seven hundred dollars, five thousand seven hundred dollars. Thousands of those veterans, like I had just told you, are finding better jobs, raising families' incomes, allowing more people to afford moving to the suburbs. One, because houses are starting to get cheaper out there because they're made quickly. B, there's prosperity. C, GI Bill's helping them. And lots of people move to those suburbs. And now that people have moved to the suburbs, they're far away from the city. They probably still work in the city. So they need a better way to get there. If they're just going down all these streets with red light, yellow light, green light, it's going to take them forever to get to the city. So they need a new system. They need these things that we see right here. These are the interstate highways that are all over the country. So during the 1950s, America starts building these interstate highways with the Interstate Highway Act, which creates the interstate highways. You ever see these signs that... Um, are on the streets near the highways those are your interstates the word enter means between or the prefix enter means between the word state is obviously a state so they go between states you see that i-10 goes through multiple states if you follow it so the point of these interstates was to make transportation easier so people in those suburbs could go to work in the city more easily as you see on this map here go to downtown houston if they work there more easily to cause trade to happen more transportation to uh, be more efficient but the way it was actually sold to congress which is pretty funny at this time was under a threat of nuclear evacuation or nuclear um, attack that everyone could simply get onto the interstate highways and simply drive away from the cities in case you know a nuclear bomb was headed to Houston Texas of course that wouldn't work today but that was kind of that was part of the reason they were built which is just a fun fact about this and then also that they could easily deploy the military in case of a communist invasion because we have to remember this is all going on during the Cold War we're afraid that bombs are coming that um, the Soviets are building all these uh, atomic weapons, hydrogen bombs, just like, just like us. So there's lots of fear, and that fear makes it way makes its way into the interstate highway system and why it was built. But for the most part, it makes things more efficient, and more people can drive from the suburbs to work and vice versa, back and forth. 
Now let's look at what's going on during the 50s as well. So after, so first of all, what are we measuring? The U.S. birth rate from 1940 to 1980. And it says the baby boomer generations in red. Births per 1,000 population. So as you see right here, here's where World War One is going. I mean, World War Two, excuse me, is going on. Uh, 1940 to 1945, uh, before 1940 as well. But we see that births are, you know, they're not that high. Once we get to 45, 46, there's a huge spike in births. What can be the reason for that? Oh, yeah, all these men who are in war are now home. And what do they have? They're starting to make a lot more money. So we see that in this baby boomer generation, there's lots of babies being born in this red area before we get to the late 60s and it starts going down. So this is what we call the baby boom. So as more families have their... Um, their husbands, their boyfriends, whatever, come home from the war, they start to have more kids. They, uh, economic growth means you have more kids for the most part. If you're doing really well as a person, you're able to spend more money and you're able to start being okay with having more kids and wanting more kids. Also, this is a reason why more people move to the suburbs because they need a bigger home they want to be away from the city they want to get away from the stress of life so they want to have a family while this baby boom is going on why they're having all these kids so for the most part the biggest point about this is why do all these people have kids because they can afford them all these people you see right here americans are doing so well they are prosperous they have are wealthy the gi bill is helping lots of men get new jobs and make lots of money and able to move to the suburbs so lots of people can afford them so families start to have lots of kids three four five six seven eight nine ten kids you'll find people that are born in the 1950s and maybe even the 60s have a lot more kids than they have today where a lot of people have one two three kids maybe so this is the baby boom with this baby boom we need more agriculture we need more food more farms more crops so as you see on this uh, chart here, once we get into the 50s, we see soybeans go up. We see that wheat starts going up as these kids start getting older. We see corn starts getting going up as these kids are getting older. So this baby boom is really showing that there's uh, a lot more necessity for food that's going on. Uh, a lot of new technologies are coming up around two during the 50s so with all these kids that people are having five six seven eight nine ten kids the perfect new invention comes out for them the television set as you sit here what better way to keep all these kids occupied than placing them right in front of the tv and guess what you have maybe one two three channels so many to choose from it's great uh refrigerators are getting more advanced you see how uh, this one's completely stocked for all those kids to eat the dishwasher this one's on top of the counter which is pretty interesting you don't see those today uh, to help wash the dishes for all those kids uh, again these are signs of prosperity of success of wealth we have the whirlpool surge matic which if you guessed it is a washer and guess what it has touch button control you just press the button and it works wouldn't it be great to get some of that technology today? <laughs> now, with television comes other innovations as well. If we don't want to wash dishes, if we don't want to wash, uh, wash uh, clothes by hand, why should we have to make dinner either? Let's have TV dinners come out. This is where they start being called TV dinners, microwavable foods, except for there's no microwaves yet. These will be made in the oven. So pre-made food that's just frozen that you stick in this freezer or fridge right here that you just stick in the oven and it thaws out and it's ready to go, ready to eat. Um, they look pretty delicious, don't they? That's what I was thinking. We also have, uh, with all of this change, with less... Um, with men going back to work and making money and back in society and things getting easier for people and the television coming and all of these babies being born women who had gained so much so much they had gained so much in the 1930s and 40s 
during the Depression and World War II as they went to work and helped win the war at home and made all the stuff for the war and were treated as equals, saying, we can do it. Now we have things like, you mean a woman can open it? As she's trying to open up a thing of ketchup. It's a lot different than Rosie the Riveter saying, we can do it, right? I think so. So that's saying, women, where do they belong? Oh, no. The 1950s is telling them they belong back in the kitchen. Look at this one. A new kitchen built to fit your wife. It's the perfect height and everything's right where you need it. Saying women belong back in the kitchen, which is ridiculous after how much um, they had gained in the 30s and 40s. Uh, Christmas morning, she'll be happier with her Hoover. Saying that women should be cleaning the house. It's ridiculous. What's on her to-do list today? Oh, right, everything. Uh, new colors are coming out for homes that are more uh, feminine, if you will. So these are a lot of issues that are happening during the 50s. But I hope you learned something. I hope you keep this in context with the Cold War that a lot of people are having fear in. Even this movement of the suburbs having all these kids um, that are happening. This baby boom, this prosperity is a way to distract Americans from the stresses of international life. Of the fear of bombs. Uh falling on them, being created, the fear of communism invading the United States with something called the Red Scare, which we'll talk about in a few lessons. Thanks, guys.